Oh, I just charged somewhere. <laughs> Oops. Did you hear that? Uh, I think I had this too close to the positive, uh, the negative terminal on the bottom. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, if you are familiar with my videos, you probably have seen me maybe on TikTok or Instagram. I have this whole idea of this YouTube. I want to have deeper dive explanations to some of the shorter videos I do there. I also do some YouTube shorts. Unfortunately, YouTube shorts is limited to 60 seconds, so I can't post everything that I do uh, in the short form here. But the idea is that if you see a video that's interesting on my Instagram or my TikTok and you want a deeper explanation, a deeper dive, so to speak, you can come to my YouTube and we can hang out here and discuss things in a little more detail where we don't have the, uh, such a short time limit. The video I want to talk about today is the one I did on the dissectable capacitor which is what's right here. Okay, so uh, let's just start with the basics. What we have here is a capacitor. A capacitor is anything that has some negative potential, some negative charge, and some positive potential, some positive charge, and then in between there's something that's keeping that from flowing to each other, right? Because the, the negative wants to go to the positive. And in this case, we have glass, um, that's a dielectric. You can have air, you can have oil, those are all called dielectrics. You could also have nothing, you could have a vacuum, and that also would make a capacitor. Uh, the way I'm gonna charge this capacitor up is using a thing called the Wimhurst machine. That's a really cool device. I don't really have the time to go into this in depth. There'll be a separate video on its own, but it's really interesting. Right now, the way you can think about it is it's just gonna set up a, some negative potential on this bottom plate, which is right here. And it's gonna set up some positive potential on this top plate right here. And it's separated by the glass. Now, when I do this, I'll just get this turned around. Turn this a few cranks here. And so right now I'm charging up. I'm putting some positive on one side, some negative on the bottom. And I can test how charged it is by now allowing a path between the two plates. So I'm just gonna short this capacitor out. And you can hear that little zap and you maybe could see the spark. I'm not sure if it'll show up in video. So I have this thing charged up. Okay, now the point of this demonstration that's kind of interesting is that I can charge this capacitor up. Okay, it takes a little while to get it fully charged. Oh, I just charged somewhere. <laughs> Oops, did you hear that? I think I had this too close to the positive, uh, the negative terminal on the bottom. All right, let's try that again. This way it won't auto discharge, hopefully. Oh, still getting a discharge. Okay, so I'm gonna move this a little bit. <laughs> All right, whoop. Uh, let's try this again. Um, okay, so now I'm going to try to charge it up. Okay, what is happening? I have not had it be this sensitive to this before. Error, loading. Okay, one second, let's try this again. All right, <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and charge this up. Again, as what I'm doing here is I'm just putting positive charge on one side, negative on the other. You can hear it. Okay, that's pretty charged. And then this is the cool thing with this demonstration is I can take this apart if I'm very careful about it, which is not always easy, okay? And if you see my video, then what you'll notice is that when I grab this, ah, there's no problem. When I do this, no problem. I can touch these together. No issue, but when I go ahead and reassemble this thing, we get a shock. Very interesting. Now in that video, I said something a little bit, not necessarily wrong, but a little bit misleading. I said energy is stored in the dielectric. Energy is not stored in the dielectric. This is the glass dielectric. Energy is stored in the electric field. That's really important. The energy is stored in the field itself. So even if these are separated by a vacuum, if there's an electric field between the two, that's where the energy of the capacitor is stored. What's happening here is actually a little bit tricky. Um, the point of the demonstration is to kind of show that the energy is in the field, but uh, if this was a perfect insulator, this actually wouldn't work because the charges, you can't actually store charge on an insulator. Um, but there's a little bit of water molecules on the surface of this, and that actually allows the charges to lay on the surface. So what's actually happening here, the real physics of what's happening, it's a little bit deeper, is that um, I'm applying, I'm putting a bunch of charge on this shell, okay? And I'm putting a bunch of charge in this shell and it's separated by this dielectric. By the way, this capacitor is called a Leiden jar. It's one of the oldest types of capacitors um, around. 
And so I'm, I'm creating this capacitor. Now, when I pull this out, something kind of weird happens. The excess positive charges that are on here are getting deposited on the inside of this glass. So they're being stripped off and being deposited on there. And when I pull this out, the excess negative charges are being stripped off and deposited on here. So this piece of glass has a bunch of all these negatives on the outside, all these positives on the inside. And the electric field still exists. It still exists across the glass. And that's where the energy is stored in that field, in the electric field. So it's basically like its own little capacitor at that point. That's why I can do this and nothing happens, right? I can do all that. Now, the one thing I have to be careful about is I can touch the glass itself. The only place that charges are allowed to leave is directly where my hand touches because it's an insulator, right? So it's not going to flow across. If I put my hand all the way in like this and my other hand like that, I would definitely get a little bit of a zap when this thing's charged. Other than that, um, it's not going to happen. Okay, so this is a little a little bit deceiving as far as exactly what's happening. This idea of stripping when you rub a surface from another one is called the tribal electric effect. Um, and so that's a little more in depth than we want to go. But the overall idea behind this video is, you know, and behind this demonstration, I should say, is just a cool way to get people excited about capacitors. You hear a big zap, you take it apart. It's a little bit of a magic trick, right? You, woo, you go crazy with it. You put it back and you get a zap again. And that part of it is what is interesting and kind of fun and getting, again, my whole idea here is physics is fun. I want people excited about physics I want people interested in science. And then maybe we can go, okay, well, what's really, what's some of the deeper physics that's happening here? And we can kind of dive in. Um, and that's why I think this is a, is a really just a fun and, and interesting demonstration. It kind of gets people thinking. All right, cool. Hopefully that wasn't too long and hopefully answered some questions we had about this because there was definitely a lot of questions on both my Instagram and on my TikTok. Um, if you don't follow me there, go ahead and definitely give that a follow. I got some cool stuff going on and follow this channel too, because I'll be adding all my deeper ones here. Again, the shorts that fit lengthwise here. And if you're interested in science, if you're interested in physics and uh, you want to see some cool, fun stuff, go ahead and, um, you know, give me a subscribe. Physics is fun. <laughs> see you guys in the next one.